And so Jesus was the only one and is the only one that can reveal God's character. Nobody else can do it. And now your host, Pastor Robert Scale. Welcome again to Jesus is Answer Ministries broadcast. I'm Pastor Rob Scales. And I, I tell you, Saints, uh, learning more about Jesus, um, it's 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 really kind of difficult for some people when you, you've been taught wrong so long. That you gotta do all this to get Jesus to love you. Jesus already loves us. Well, you if you don't give no tithes, you're cursed. No. How could you be cursed when he already loves you? Well, what, what can cause you to live in curses in your flesh? Because your spirit can't be cursed. The real you can't be cursed in Jesus. If you never gave God nothing, your spirit can't be cursed. Now, here's the problem with that. You won't live out of your spirit the life that God put in there. So you don't give to get God to give you the life. You give to live God's life. Amen. And um, here's some truths. Go, let's go back to John 6. We're teaching on I believe God. Uh, one of the things that, that we have to stay hold of is how to work the works of God. And Jesus said in John 6, 29, this is the work of God. This is the service that God requires of us, that we believe, cleave, trust, rely on the one whom God sent, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in order for you to really trust and cleave to Jesus correctly, especially in testing trials, troubles, tribulation, distresses, one of the greatest things that you've got to believe is he overcame the world. When you're in uh, uh, temptations I've been in some and, and and I mean you just feel like you can't make it but I, I believed in Jesus that he did he went through that yet without sinning and I trusted him to change me where I, I, I wouldn't give in to that and didn't uh, Jesus has the power listen carefully at this Jesus has the power to tell you to go and sin no more. See, you have to trust in him, believe in him, that, that you're not facing nothing in your life that he can't handle, did handle on the cross, and will handle every time in our lives. Jesus told a woman in John 8, verse 11, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. And so I remember uh, after three months walking with the Lord, I, I didn't think about a woman. Not one thought for three months. And then the devil came and tempted me. I began to get a desire in my flesh to be with a woman. Now, now here, here's where many people never have got. When the devil's tempting me and I got I, I got the desire. He he located me. And 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 I went straight and told Jesus. See, I abide in Jesus. His words abide in me. Jesus taught me that he's never upset that something's wrong in my life. He taught me that nothing. No mess ups, no failures, no weaknesses, no tests and trials. Life, death, angels, demons, and all the powers of hell can never stop him from loving me. And until you get this, you, you won't trust him right. You, you'll have a lot of problems and areas in your life that he ain't able to deal with. Because you, you're feeling guilty and shameful about them things. And 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 and, and when I got tempted, I, I went straight to Jesus. John 15, verse 7. And I abided in him. Jesus said, 
I said, Lord, I, I want to have sex. And I'm not married. I'm not in no covenant. He said, you'll hurt me if you do that. I said, well, I don't want to hurt you. But I still got this desire. See, you draw away your own lust. When lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin matures, it brings forth what ain't God. And I just, I, I, I'd never been really taught by nobody. I just was in a relationship with Jesus. And I said these words. I said, Lord Jesus, if you will lift this off me, I'm going to get on my knees here by the bed and pray. If you will lift this off me, I'll serve you all the days of my life. And I got on my knees, prayed, and it left. Now, here, here, here. My faith grew for the next test that if he could lift that off of me, he could do anything. You, you got to have an area where he's done something for you and you transfer that faith in him to your next area. When you keep struggling and struggling and struggling, you're not transferring your faith in what he did for you so that you can overcome the next area. And that's the reason why I ain't had a depressed day in over 20 years. And they're not stressful days. Sure, it came. Sure, depression tried to come. Never got to stay. Because why? What you do, Pastor Scales? That's almost impossible to believe you can live in this world and not be depressed. Well, was Jesus ever depressed? Well, no, not, not him. He was God in the flesh. Oh, that same God lives in me. Surely he could teach me how to do it too. And so I, I ran to Jesus. I didn't know how to live in what I'm living in today, but I ran to him and got him to help me. And I'll do it today if I need to. And 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 and, and I had Jesus. When that desire lifted, I didn't go sin against him. And wouldn't do it. And many times when people are, are missing it, they, they, they don't add Jesus for no help. They don't believe in it. They don't rely on it. They're not cleaving to him, trusting in him. Now listen, listen carefully now what that means. That he's got the power. He's got the wisdom. He's got the sanctification. He's got the holiness. He's got the whole thing. Can you imagine saints? If I, if I could teach this to the whole body of Christ. Do you know how much difference this would make in people's lives? If they found out that, that their faith is supposed to be in Jesus, in him, in Mr. Perfect, in Mr. Never Done Nothing Wrong, and that, that my faith in him will cause what's perfect in him to be perfect in me. I mean, he does live in us. Why couldn't he live out of us? Why couldn't the life that he is be lived through us? The Apostle Paul taught this in Galatians 2, 7. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not out, but Christ liveth in me. The message Bible said, the life you see me living now is not man, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in this flesh, human body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Did you know when you tell people and preach this, well, ain't nobody perfect. Did you know you are totally tearing people's faith in Jesus down? Whenever, oh, hallelujah, whenever you are looking at you, whenever you are in faith in you, believing in how you are, well, Pascal, you know ain't nobody perfect. Hold on, now Jesus is. My faith is in him. So that what's in him can work in me perfectly. Just like it did in him. Why does he want me to abide in him. And not produce me. Why did he die for me. To keep producing me. Look like 
He could have just stayed alive and I just stayed. We just stayed like we are. What did he take our sins away for if he wanted us to stay in sin? Everybody got some skeletons in their closet. How do you know? You've been in everybody's closet? See, these preachers are, are speaking this from their own junk. Because if they didn't have that, they wouldn't be teaching that. Everybody. So, you you know, pick that up when you hear that. They, when they say everybody got some skeletons, you know they talking about them. Because you can't know everybody. You got to be speaking from you. Because you don't live with everybody. And and, and they, they, they keeping people seeing conscious. And not Jesus, perfect, never sinned, never messed up, overcame the world, conscience. How many of you all want a revelation? Come on now. Say, I do. Or raise your hand up. All right, all right, I'm going to give it to you. Now, here's a revelation. Every time, all you out there watching the broadcast that's facing some dilemma, some circumstance, some test and trial, things uh, look like they ain't working for you, things look like it ain't coming through, things ain't turning around. Here's what I want you to do. Go and consider Jesus who went through this same thing yet without sin. He went through what you're facing. You're not facing nothing that Jesus didn't overcome. And I tell you the problem with people, and as a pastor, Jesus answered church. The, the problem I see with people more than any other thing is this thinking, thinking. It's the problem. And not believing, not believing, not believing. In Jesus. And they're arguing with you. Oh no. No, I, I trust the Lord for everything. And, and you just got through speaking doubt to me. Just got through speaking doubt. People can be angry and bitter and think they know Jesus. And none of that stuff's in Jesus. And I I I I learned from day one. When I got kicked out of Samaritan Drug Treatment Center for talking about Jesus in the class, I went back to my room packing my stuff, crying, listen to that, and said, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? And I'm telling you, them some sweet words. Because now you just opened the gates of heaven up for him to tell you. For him to show you. For him to reveal it to you. Every time, saints, that I've been through tests and trials, I, I look to Jesus. Man, I look to him. I, I don't know. I, I, you can't make people do it. it it's a decision, a quality decision. In, in, in Hebrew 12, 3, it says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. Oh, some folks been doing you wrong, huh? You feel real cheated. Mm. Now, you know, you done messed up somewhere. You all not feel that bad. Jesus never messed up. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest you be weary and faint in your minds. Too many Christians are weary. Why, Pascal? Why you ain't been weary in over 20 years? Because I keep considering Jesus. Looking to him. Cleaving to him. Depending on him. Now here's the revelation I was going to give y'all a while ago. Whatever you're facing today. Whatever you've been facing, 
whatever you go face. Believe Jesus overcame it. Believe Jesus overcame it. Watch, for example, here it is, here it is. You struggling. This is wrong. They treated you wrong. They dogging you at work. They dogging you in this. You're being mistreated in your family. You're being mistreated in your marriage. What do you do, Pastor Kiss? I said, Jesus overcame this. Now watch this. I don't believe I, I, I do. I don't believe I am. My first assignment in my faith is to believe in him. Get that. I wonder how many of y'all live this every day, every day, every time, every test, every trial, every time. Listen, saints. That whenever something go wrong, you say, well, I know Jesus whooped this. I know Jesus overcame this. You know, Jesus was perfect. And he died on the cross and took the place of me as a sinner. I better consider him. Because, listen carefully at this. He never done nothing wrong. I, I never had to repent. I done been forgiven. Jesus never was forgiven. Consider him. That he went through the suffering of man's sins and never did nothing wrong. That had to shake you all the way up. Man, you won't be able to complain about nobody no more the rest of your life. You ain't got to like what they did because he didn't like it. But he was obeying the Father's love. And we must obey Jesus' love. How he loved us while we were yet sinners. We, we have to obey that. Live in that. Walk in that. And so many times people do not consider Jesus. And that's why they whine and complain and live in their flesh and give their opinions and say what they think and what they feel. Because when you walk with Jesus, you're not going to do that. When you wrong, you wrong. He had to teach me to not let that bother me when I was wrong. I used to hate being wrong. I just you know, you just kind of beat yourself up. Jesus taught me how to not beat myself up. Just go ahead and accept it and know that he still loves me and trust him to do something about it. I want to go back to John 6. You just can't teach this stuff too much. Um, verse 63 is the spirit that quickening the flesh prop is nothing that's, that's just a, a revelation that probably take Christians you know 10 to 20 years to learn that your old stinking flesh your feelings your emotions they don't profit nothing when you don't have this revelation you, you think that they, they, they really mean something and you give heed to them but Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there's some of you that believe not. Oh, we could say that today. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said unto you, no man come unto me except they were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. I wonder if there are people today that's like that, never really believed in him. That said they did. And then when Jesus said do something. They didn't want to do it. And didn't walk no more with it. Hmm. I'm going to tell you some things. I tell people when they come to the church. When you accept Jesus. I tell you you got to quit sinning. You got to quit fornicating. Y'all got to quit living together. Y'all got to quit. After you believe in Jesus. I think sometimes. That preachers have been in their emotion. They ain't been preaching Jesus. And they say, well, you, you know, 
you need to lead, lead them alone. Well, I don't see the early church leaving people alone like that. People come up with their own documents. He, that, that woman called it an act of adultery. I, I didn't see Jesus tell her, well, just hang in there. You know, I understand. You human. He told her, go and sin no more. I don't never tell him to tell. that In no verse, he tell anybody, it's all right. You know, I understand you human. Listen, God didn't even use that excuse with the Jews who were spiritually dead. Man, he made them responsible. Did you notice there's no verse in the Old Testament where God said, I know the devil made y'all do that. I know he tempted you. And the devil was tempting them. And God never let them use that as an excuse. They got judged and got death unless he forgave them. So how you think in Jesus, because grace came, that you can continue in sin that grace may abound? The Bible said God forbids in Romans 6.1. And they done, they, done, they done made an excuse that, that because we have a human side that we pose to give in to that and believe in that, not in Jesus. Man, when people come and don't come back, I, I you know, and a lot of pastors don't even understand. They probably got a bunch of people in the church don't even believe in Jesus. And they waiting on a storm to come to find out. They'll disagree with you and just disagree with Jesus when they don't believe in it. Well, I just don't see nothing wrong with listening to a little word of music. It ain't no curse words in it. Hmm. Where'd you get that at? Well, I watch Desperate Wise, but you know it ain't really all that bad. It's some good in it, too. You don't hear people. And, and, and they, they, they come up with their own document. Ain't, and this is a bad one, y'all. Ain't nobody perfect. And what that tells you is, is you got the right to keep on messing up. You don't have to trust Jesus that the life was in him, live in you, where you have no excuses in your life. Simon Peter answered to the Lord. Jesus asked him, will you go also? Man, I believe we need to ask that in church sometime. But you know, somebody leave. Well, y'all going with them? Peter said, Lord, where in the world are we going to go? This is the way Jesus wants his disciples and his true followers. Lord, where are we going to go? Who is going to teach us and give us the life of God? The peace of God. The strength of God. The love of God. The world is going crazy, y'all. Who gonna give it to you? Well, thou hast the words of eternal life. Now listen to that now. I want you to see something here in closing today. Jesus didn't just say, sometime he said, I got eternal life. But right here, he said, I got the words of eternal life. The word of eternal life. You know, I, I I got I meet a lot of different religious people and uh Jehovah Witnesses and, and I meet them, I love them. Don't agree with them, but I love them. And and, and you you'll hear them quote some out of the high tower. Latter day Saints, you'll hear them quote some out of their book. Muslim quote some out of their book. Hindus quote out of their book. And people say they're Christian, can't quote nothing from Jesus. Uh, uh I can't remember that. Uh, I, I know it's in there. Woo! Why can't you remember it? You ain't put your life in this. That's why. Let somebody owe you some money. I, I, I guarantee you 50 years from now, you'll still remember. That they owe you some money. You know, you want me to tell you why? Because that means something to you. And you've got to let Jesus, who has the words of eternal life, it's got to mean something to you to get those words living inside of you where you're living them 
every day. His life. And then, then, then in verse 69, John 6, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Here's where you must become sure that Jesus is the anointing, the anointing, the one who was sent with all of God, the Son of the living God. He was the image of God, the likeness of God. He was the person of God. He was the love of God. He was the character of God. He was the authority of God. Everything you see Jesus do, that same life is living in you. Amen. I'll pick this back up tomorrow because I've got to keep teaching you who Jesus is, then who you are in him, and then what you can do living in him. Amen. Amen. On screen is, uh, I want to make a baby you this six CD series called I Believe God. Oh, this is some nuggets in this series. So on the screen is our address for love gift of $30 or more. I'll pay the postage and handling. And if you ask me, I'll send you a free copy of my book. And um, this will help us saints in the ministry. So make your checks and money orders to Jesus. It's at some ministries. Post office box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee. 37229. Order these today. And uh, I tell you, your life will never, ever be the same. Amen. A lot of errors that you've been struggling in, not getting from God, I guarantee you these will help you get it. Also, I want to invite you to Jesus to send to church and say, listen, our service time Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, Thursdays, 7 p.m. A church that's alive is worth the drive. And we really just about 35 minutes from Nashville and 10 minutes from Lebanon and and, and, and we're, about, we're about 20 minutes from Murfreesboro and we're not that far we got people that, that drive from Chevyville and uh, Nashville, Mount Julie Hendersonville, Huntsville Alabama uh, I got a guy that's over past Knoxville that comes and, 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 and so you know they, they see the importance of what I'm teaching how it affects your children, your marriage, your home, being a single. We, we teach our singles on occasion don't even get mentioned in the church. Amen. So if you really want a church where they, we really after Jesus, I invite you to come. Well, my time's up. But I want to thank my friend, my partners. Thank you so much for your financial support. And saints, I'm telling you, if it wasn't for my partners, I would not be on TV. So thank you so much for your continued support and helping me to get the gospel and preach the truth about Jesus Christ. Well, my prayer for you is you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with the fullness of God. From Jesus as the ministries, I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember now, Jesus' commandment was not to go love, but to believe first how he loved you and then go live your faith in Jesus toward one another. Have a blessed day in Jesus and stay in his love. Bye-bye.